Well, good evening. It's so nice to see you. I mean, it's, where have you been? Wow. Welcome. We're delighted to have you. They've already been here. Uh, we, as always, we're going to begin our meeting tonight with a scripture reading. So if you could just um, pause for a moment and listen to the words of St. Paul's um, as he spoke to the Corinthians. There are different gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are different ministries, but the same Lord. There are different works, but the same God who accomplishes all of them in everyone. To each person, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, the Spirit gives wisdom and discourse, and to another, the power to express knowledge. Through the Spirit, one receives faith, and by the same Spirit, another is given the gift of healing, and still another, miraculous powers. Prophecy is given to one, to another, the power to distinguish one spirit from another. One receives the gift of tongues, another, that of interpreting the tongues. But it is one and the same Spirit who produces all these gifts, distributing to each as he wills. The word of the Lord. And that's why y'all are here. Because you're gifted. And you came to share your gifts. And you said yes to that call. Whoever asked you to be on that board. Whoever asked you to be on the executive committee. You said yes, and I say thank you. I appreciate that very much. Now tonight you have a little uh, brochure, a little piece of paper here, beige color, um, that outlines everything we're going to talk about tonight. You've all had your new, print, new member workshop anyway, so you understand the basic premise of uh, the board and how we do. So we're going to quickly run over just the six board commandments. And I know you've, you know them. Some of you could just say them in your uh, sleep. But we're going to do that because we know that, um, again, reminding you, that board is a ministry of the church, not just a business to be done. And it's important that we all collaborate together and not work against each other. And so if we look at the responsibilities of the executive committee, first is to make sure that you follow the six board commandments. And let's quickly look at them because we know that a board which consistently follows these guidelines in a systematic and unhurried manner will usually arrive at consensus decisions which are in the best interest of the community. And so the first one is that boards decide. That means not discuss as a committee as a whole on what executive committees decide. Executive committees make agendas only. Number two, committees work. In new member workshop, you heard this. Because this is where the meat of the board really takes place. And this is the time of each meeting when you bring that committee work back to the meeting that you really have time to discuss. But committees work. They can work outside of board meetings, of course. And then they bring their information as they gather it and compile it, etc. The third one is that agendas govern. And what it means by that is make an agenda and stick to it. Because it gives the flow to the meeting. It keeps you on track. It, it's a process of good decision making because that's what's built into the agenda. If it's not on the agenda, don't talk about it. Put it on next month's agenda. Okay? Fourth, executive committees think. Now that's what we're going to really talk about tonight. The meat of our workshop tonight is you. The actual emphasis of tonight's session. And number five is principal share. That means that they keep you informed of current school information, educational trends, processes they have in place in school, um, concerns or future needs, um, financial picture. They should give you the monthly report. It comes from the finance committee, but principal that is part is still part of their uh, report. Um, the sixth one is everyone writes. And that's my favorite. Because you only remember correctly what you have that's given to you in a written form. If it's only given to you verbally, 
then everybody will go out of a meeting remembering something different. So agenda is written, minutes are written, all reports, whether they're interim or final, are written, and finances are written. Can you imagine getting a finance report without a written report? I mean, I know there's some geniuses in finance that can do that, but I certainly could not do that. And there's one thing that I want to tell tonight that I, I really usually didn't say this in the new member workshop, but the vice president of our boards has a different type of position than lots of vice presidents of other boards. And their position is that they are responsible for making sure whoever has a report do it, this particular meeting gets their report in. That's what the vice president is entitled to do. That's a real special gift that the vice president gets to remind to make sure that all the reports that are due at this particular meeting are in. Isn't that a great one? It is. It's a great one. Okay. Um, the, what we suggest is that the executive committee um, meets at least two weeks before the regular meeting. And you meet so that, first of all, Look back over the agenda that you had last month and just talk about at least did, how the meeting went. Kind of do a little evaluation of your own meeting. And the reason you do that is for two reasons. Um, if it didn't go well, then you don't want to do that again in the same way. But you also, if you, if you talk about the agendas and how they flowed, you also can sometimes realize that there may be one or two on the board that really do like to talk a lot. And so you, you learn how to channel people's energy, their energy of talking. And that's why it's good to talk about the last meeting. Did somebody monopolize? Did we let somebody monopolize? That's important. It's the balance of conversation. You know, did I as a president, uh, did I call forth conversation uh, comments from people that, that don't talk a lot? And that's the healthy thing for a board president. And so if you talk about your last meeting, sometimes you'll pick up on things that um, that need to be changed, that you need to do differently. And then you also, uh, you, you check to see what was the length of that meeting? You know, was it too long? What caused it to be too long? You know, did it go out of hand? You know, that kind of thing. You know, was it planned well? Was the agenda right? How did it flow? Those kinds of things you ask yourself. And then the other thing you do, of course, is decide action on suggested topics for future business. Now, there are definitely agenda items that are on certain months of every year. Your salary guidelines are already, always, your, your beginning of the year you always talk about your budget and if it's, because if it's, um, sometimes you know when the budget is made the year before you budget for a certain number of students and sometimes that number of students is more than you had budgeted for and sometimes it's less than you had budgeted for. Now if it's more than you budgeted for you can celebrate but if it's not what you budgeted for, then you have to decide uh, how we're going to cut this budget and what we're going to cut back on because you got to live within the budget and you can't live within the budget that you budgeted for more students than you now have. So that's that's a piece that you take that you also look at. Um, but you decide, you look at the agenda items that have come to you from a variety of ways and see is there any of these agenda items that people want to put on the agenda really not ours? Are they administrative? They really should go to the principal. Or maybe they should even go to the pastor. You know, there might be. And if so, the important thing is if you decide that this is not a, an item for the agenda, that it's really an item for the principal as an administrator, or it's really an item for the pastor or whatever, or even sometimes it might be an item for the development director, you know, then the important thing is that you always, the president would always go back to the person who asked for that to be on the agenda and tell them what happened to it. That's the communication piece that's important. Go back to the person who might have suggested that item so that they know that, you know, that it, it was important. It's important enough that they recommended it, they know where it goes. So that's important too. But anyway, you decide on the topics for that particular night and you also map out, especially at the beginning of the year, you map out the year what items you know that are going to go on um, agendas throughout the month, throughout the different months of the year. But you do that kind of work at the beginning of the year so that you know what things are going to take, how much time even, how much time you'll have to spend. Um, 
and then the other two if sometimes you're unable to consider now but you're going to put it on um, as a future topic again bank it make sure you don't lose it put it in a, in a column someplace that it's going to someday be on the new business but not right now but if it does decide to be on the old business put it on there um, and then you determine all the new business items for the agenda and at the beginning of the year you usually don't have any and that first meeting you usually um, it's, it's a, a, a welcoming year welcoming the year and you, if, if there's anything that's on it it was on there from last year or it's the one particular item that stays on every year and then you discuss the background information for any item that you might have um, and I'm going to again I remind you that background information just needs to be practical to tell people what you want them to think about ahead of time when they're doing their homework because remember when they get their agenda they need to do their homework and if all they see is an agenda and no background information whatsoever then they don't know what to think about all they know is there's an item there so if you do some background information it's very very helpful for them if it's an old business item and you're going to do the background information give the precise wording of the recommended action if it's a new business you provide the context and reason for board action you state a clear expectation for the committee work you describe the task and the subtask for the committee you give the months when the interim reports are due and you assign the issue to a uh, committee okay now the next thing that you do is you assemble your agenda packet now <coughs> most likely you already have the minutes from the secretary so you that that will be there with you that night and then you, you build your agenda that night um, you build your background information page you talk about the administrative reports to make sure that you're going to get that from the principal um, parent group reports you know the vice president remind the vice president they're reminded that night that they have to remind people when their reports are due because the packets going out on this particular date that's your job the vice president um, or any interim reports again you remind those people and of course the monthly financial statement that's a very very important piece that is what goes in your agenda packet now you're not necessarily going to assemble it that night but you're, you're basically assembling a timeline for it when you're going to get it in because every parish school does it a little bit differently sometimes the secretary of the board actually does the assembling there are some but in many of them the secretary of the school does the board packet puts it together some the principal helps I mean there's just a variety of ways that this can happen but um, that's up to your own local scene I'm not going to dictate that to you um, some of you have more help than others or whatever but that's what goes in the agenda packet and that's the thing the agenda packet would go out a, a, at least a week ahead of time and make sure you have a good way of sending it out if you're not one that's sending it out by the mail then make sure that you have a, a way that 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 board member is going to get it in a timely fashion so that they can do their homework and that you know sometimes you say oh you don't need a week you know what yes you do one of that board member might be somebody that travels and they're only home on the weekends so it would be good that they had it the weekend before their meeting was going to be not the day before the meeting was going to be it's really not fair to accept people to expect people to be you know up to date and ready to discuss things when they don't get the information ahead of time any questions on the agenda packet you're a great group okay to the right side of our brochure here responsibilities of board officers the president chairs the executive committee meeting ensures that the pastor's views are included and that means if the pastor you know the pastor is not does not attend executive committee meetings sometimes you'll have to say to the pastor I really need you at this particular one maybe the pastor does go to every board meeting but they don't go to every executive committee meeting there may be from time to time one that about, uh, that you really do need the pastor at that might be a particular issue tell the pastor ahead of time this is when the executive committee is meeting could you please be there we just need you for this particular item but it's important it's very important if you happen to have um, a pastor who is not able to attend every single meeting however we do hope and pray that they do attend most of them 
then it is the president's position that they assure that the pastor's view is known so that they they bring it to the executive committee I've already talked to the pastor this is how you know this is what he thinks on this or whatever it's the important thing is that the view is there the next is that they guide committees to select significant issues they ensure the distinction of the board and administrative roles we talked about that earlier when we were deciding what was going on the agenda um, they also are the person who implements the agenda and they ensure that all discussion at the board meeting is relevant and they ensure the broadest discussion on interim reports that's the most important when there's an interim report that comes in on committee work the important thing is that you try to get a good representation of people to speak to it don't always let as a board president don't always let just a few people speak to it you know some people are shy and they don't feel as comfortable speaking out in groups so the board president needs to kind of pull from them you know and sometimes you can say it's it's okay to call somebody's name and say did you have anything to add to that because sometimes they just need to be asked they just don't aren't comfortable everybody's different everybody has different gifts but everybody's piece of wisdom is very important and really adds to the whole and then the other thing that makes a, a good board president is that they know when to table committee discussion at the board level that's very important because sometimes meetings can go on hours if a board president doesn't know where doesn't know when to rein it in and say uh, this is this is with all the discussion we can have on that one tonight we'll continue this at the next meeting that's really okay because as we earlier said in other workshops too is that some items take time and you can't say everything that needs to be said in one night and in fact it's not even healthy to say everything that needs that people want to say perhaps on the first night that it comes in as interim report you can have other times with other interim reports so you know a good president knows when to call it and says okay we've had enough discussion on that one tonight we'll bring that back the next time you've got enough input to add to it and come back the next time that's really okay that's, in fact that's very good okay vice president the vice president it notes the final final and interim re committee reports are needed when they're needed and they let those people know that their reports are needed and they ensure that the written reports are in the agenda packet and that's very important make sure that the written reports are in the agenda packet so you got to remind the people of that and then of course they support the president in achieving the agenda so sometimes it would be good that the president might uh, the vice president might sit next to the um, president because you know sometimes a little nudge won't hurt you know maybe we need to move on I mean sometimes if you work as a team that can happen because sometimes you know as a president you're trying to take everything that everybody's saying um, into consideration and you can lose your, you can lose it a little bit lose the balance and so a good pre vice president and president they need to talk to each other about you know, you know nudge me a little bit if you think that that we need to go faster or, or are we going to you know too slow or whatever that's that's very good though if you can work together that way and then of course the vice president also takes the president's place and runs the meetings and the agenda when the president is not able to be there as for the secretary the secretary provides the executive committee with the previous meeting minutes so when you have your executive committee meeting the minutes should be there and um, you know there may have to be some changes in them you need to read them and be sure that that's exactly what happened and then they also record any actions of the executive committee now if you're just doing the agenda and there's nothing to record then you just say that we just did the agenda and that was it but if there's some actions or something that you do um, that you don't want to lose track of then have a minute have your minutes of your executive committees they don't have to be long or anything but if there's anything that you don't want to lose track of be sure you do put that in your minutes for the executive session and then of course the secretary is the one that usually assists in assembling the agenda packet as I said before though sometimes that happens differently on uh, local levels and then the secretary records actions of the board now what I mean by that is when a secretary does the minutes for the board they do not write she said this and he said 
this. And they said this would happen. And they said they would get these people on this committee. And they said, we don't need all that. We don't need all those people's names. We don't. All we need in a minute are actions that were taken. The discussion that happens with the committee reports, you don't need to write all that down. You don't read it. You don't. You really don't. You got the written report from the committee that night and you discuss it, but you don't have to have all the minutes on the committee reports. The, the, minute really, the minutes really should be the actions that you decide on. All you're doing that night is discussing. So you don't need every item that everybody says and when they said it and how they said it and when they're going to say it again and, you know. So you get my drift, but you just don't. All you need are decisions that are made. So it records the actions of the board. Now the executive secretary, which is the president, or in the high school level it would be the, pre um, I mean the president in the elementary level, it's the principal, um, often will help the board president make the distinction if it's in a, this particular thing is an administrative role that should take care of that item or if it's a board matter. Sometimes there has to be discussion there, the clarification. And then again, they will give the professional um, viewpoint of issues at that particular meeting. Um, they will help to assemble the agenda packet. They provide um, all appropriate information that is requested. And that's the time to ask principals for particular information that you really want. And then they can tell you when they can have it for you. They provide leadership on emerging educational issues. And sometimes they are the ones who bring those issues and say, you know, I, I really want to bring this to the attention of the board. And they also will recommend future topics of board for the board consideration. Now that's the only thing that I actually have uh, under each of the positions. But what I'd like to talk about a little bit right now is I always suggest that executive committees have a summer board planning meeting so that you don't do it just the two weeks. When you're planning the year, you're not doing it just two weeks before the first meeting. It's, it's almost good sometimes to have it at the end of the school year after you have your new people in place so that you, know, you can kind of get to know what your patterns are in working with each other. But to at least look over this last year, because you're all people usually on the executive committee that have been on the board the year before, um, but look over the year and see how it went. Um, were there things that you don't want to duplicate again? That you, you know, how can we make sure that this doesn't happen? Kind of assess what your year was like. Um, and then look to see what is it that you need to plan for the next school year. And then look to see were there items that were for agenda work that never got on the agenda. And so that you can see how you can plan that in for the new agendas this particular year. Um, look to see which items are normal to every month all year. Um, look to um, see that what new things might need to be in the handbook next year. I mean, the, the principal is responsible for the handbook, but it's okay also to have the board um, even read over the handbook because they have a different perspective of it and see are there things in the handbook that, um, ne that we know need to be changed, need to be revised, or are there things that need to be added to the handbook. That's a very important discussion piece. And I always say to print, it's good to have a board, uh, which would be a couple board members, look at it with you because they have a different perspective. They're, most of the time are coming from a parent perspective. So it's, it, they will see things that you might not see. Um, and then again, look to see what committees you want to have next year. You know, is there a particular committee that was not active at all this past year and why? Discuss those kinds of things. And I think that's why it's usually helpful to do it at the end of the school year rather than wait to two weeks before school. Um, and we always have to go over things two weeks before the first meeting anyway. But, um, and then the other thing is the upkeep plan. Every school should have an upkeep plan of some sort for their facilities and their grounds. And that's the time to kind of look to see, is it up to date? Um, the, I know some schools that actually do have um, a database that is that tells when the new roof was on, tells when the new school desks were built, were bought, tells when the, the rooms were painted, which rooms were painted. They do it year by year and they just add to it. And they just kind of keep it updated, which is wonderful. I mean, you know it is, very much so. And especially for history. 
if you change principles, you know, usually principles remember everything. But if you change principles, they might, you know, the new principal might not know, when did we ever have, when was the air conditioning replaced? You know, those kinds of things, they help you for planning. And that's what upke upkeep logs, really, um, or inventories do for executive committees. It keeps you in touch with the facilities that you're managing. Um, what other kinds of things would you want to discuss at a summer meeting of planning for your board? Any ideas? Yes, David. Plans to involve parents of all the students in as many activities as you can. Okay. Can you think of anything else? We generally have like back to school work days. Back to school work days. Where we clean the grounds or call the parents and encourage them all to come in. We talk about that at a summer plan. Right. In fact, I know most schools have back to school work days and have a couple work days during the year too. Um, and you know, if you don't plan for them early enough, then they, they're not scheduled on the calendar and then they start interfering with other things that are already scheduled. So they should be scheduled for the year really, rather than um, as, as, as needed, they should be scheduled out already and then and there really are community building days too but if you can get more and more people involved in them they really are community involvement days and then everybody's invested so that's a very good topic to put on a summer meeting time the important thing is that you um, is that you plan number one and that you get to know each other and how you're going to work together and how you're going to do things for the year Now, that's all I have. Any questions? See, that's a, that's a simple guide. And there you have it with you. You're going to take it with you. So, so that we can all do this together. Could we just um, turn to the back and look at the Code of Ethics for Catholic School Board members? And recite it together. And this is something that you definitely should use at the beginning of the school year with all board members. And there are some boards that remind their board members like uh, at the end of the first semester, they do it for the second semester. I even had a board one time tell me that they did it every meeting because they just wanted to be sure that everybody was always aware of what their responsibility were. As a member of a Catholic school board, I acknowledge that schools are a significant expression of the teaching structure of the Catholic Church and function within its structure. We'll become more knowledgeable about the mission of Catholic education as expressed in this school and sincerely promote it to the various publics with whom I have influence. Recognize the need for continuing education about my responsibilities and know that I do not represent the board officially unless authorized to do so will be fully and carefully prepared for each meeting by doing the required readings and completing necessary tasks for committee work and reports. Support the principal and authorized functions and avoid intruding in administrative details unless requested to do so. We'll be loyal to board decisions even though personally opposed to the final recommendations and decisions. We'll be alert to alternate solutions to problems by keeping an open mind. We'll disqualify myself from discussion and vote on an issue where there is a conflict of interest with my family or business interest, or if the outcome will grant me any pecuniary or material benefits. And pray often for other members of the board, this Catholic school, and community it serves. And thank you all very much. I appreciate you and I appreciate the work that you do in your ministry as Catholic board members.